there, this is Ruth. I'm one of the naturalists at Beaver Creek Reserve. Today as I was on the trail, I was spotting something that confuses students sometimes. So this black stuff that we see every once in a while on some of the trees, when I'm with students, I quite often will ask them what they think that is. And quite often we're on animal signs hikes, so they're kind of very, they're kind of looking for animal signs. And so immediately they start telling me it's scat, it's poop. Um, and then we put on our scientist brains a little bit. Look at the size of this. And then think about the animal. How big would that animal have to be to be, you have scat that big? Pretty good sized animal. And then it would, then it would have to balance on this little bitty stick. And that would be a great trick. Can you imagine seeing all these big animals like balancing on little, little sticks as they go to the bathroom? That's crazy. Well, then they'll think about it some more and they'll say, oh, it's a bird. It's bird droppings. Well, okay, so think about bird droppings that we know. They're those great big white splops that are on the sidewalks or our car or if you hang your laundry outside, sometimes on your laundry. Thank goodness it's not big solid pellets like this falling out of the sky. That would be a little dangerous sometimes. So this is not scat at all. Let's get animals out of our head altogether. This is caused by a fungus. Now when I was growing up, we called this stuff dead man's finger. Sort of looked like a finger. There's a crooked one here. Other people call it cherry knot or black knot. The fungus that causes this affects only members of the prunus family. So plums and cherries for the most part in this part of, of the world. This right here is a combination of both the fungus and the tree's reaction to the fungus. So what happens is if the spring is fairly warm and humid and rainy, the fungus will produce spores. Those spores are then forcibly ejected when they're hit by a raindrop. Now, if it's just simply raining, the spore may just move over to another branch. If there's a breeze, it'll get carried away for a bit and land on other things. It will only affect those members of the right family, so those, those cherries and plums, and then it has to land on either new shoots, new growth, or an injury. It can't really hurt a healthy tree if it lands just on, on healthy bark. Now that fungus will then hang out in that tree and grow for like a year. And it's pretty slow the first year, so you don't really even notice it. If you're really looking for it, you might notice a soft, kind of olive brown lump on the tree branch. It goes through the winter and then the next spring it's, that fungus starts to grow again and it really starts to pump out the, uh, the growth hormones. And those chemicals react with the tree and the tree goes into hyperdrive. It kind of like grows, it over responds to it and it makes huge over enormous cells. And that's when we start seeing the, the tumor-like growths or the galls. Um, and so this is again a combination of both the fungus and the tree cells that we're seeing. If it kills the branch, if the branch dies, the fungus dies. But if it didn't affect the whole branch and the branch continues to grow, it'll produce spores again the following year. As long as it doesn't cut or girdle the tree, go all the way around, the tree can usually tolerate the fungus. Now, if it gets into the trunk and it grows all the way around the trunk, then that cuts off the food supply between the leaves and the roots. And so that will kill the tree eventually. So as you're out exploring, keep an eye open for all the cool things you might see, especially now that the leaves are gone. Have fun exploring. Hi, I'm Eric Keisler, Executive Director from Beaver Creek Reserve. Thanks for watching this great educational video from our staff. To find out more information like this and others, check out our website at beavercreekreserve.org. You can also support us by being a member or donating to our endowment campaign, which is supporting Beaver Creek through this COVID-19 crisis.
Thank you. We appreciate your time.